In this video, we'll be performing a percutaneous iliofemoral venous thrombectomy using a contralateral approach. This is a 65-year-old female who presented with acute onset left lower extremity swelling and pain. Her past medical history is significant for hypertension and coronary artery disease with no previous surgical interventions. On physical exam, her vitals were within normal limits, and the only significant finding was uh, left lower extremity edema and pain extending from her hip down to her foot. A venous duplex was obtained, and the left common femoral vein was noted to be non-compressible, as well as the left profunda vein and femoral vein. Here again, you can see a longitudinal view of the left common femoral vein with thrombus within the lumen, and the right common femoral vein is patent. the left profunda vein and longitudinal view, as well as the left popliteal vein. Due to the extent of the DVT up into the common femoral vein on the left, the decision was made to obtain a CT venogram. There is noted to be thrombus within the distal IVC. The left common iliac vein is occluded as well as the external iliac vein extending all the way down to the popliteal vein. Summarized here are the 10 steps for this procedure. A six French sheath was placed in the left popliteal vein and a 10 French sheath in the right common femoral vein. The glider wire was then passed through our six French sheath and into the inferior vena cava and a snare was placed through the 10 French sheath. The glider wire was then snared and externalized through the 10 French sheath and was exchanged for a stiff glide wire using an exchange catheter. We then exchanged our 10 French sheath for a 14 French 65 centimeter core dry seal sheath, passing the sheath up and over the IVC confluence and into the left common iliac vein. Next, we passed our CAT-12 penumbra device through the 14 French sheath and down to the left popliteal vein to perform suction thrombectomy up to the left common iliac vein. We were able to get a buddy glide wire through the 14 French sheath and into the left profunda vein allowing for suction thrombectomy of the profunda vein. Step eight, we performed IVUS and a venogram to evaluate for any further stenoses or any remaining thrombus, and then performed angioplasty and stenting as needed. Here you can see our glide wire is being passed up through the common femoral vein, the left iliac venous system, and into the IVC. Our snare is advanced through our right common femoral vein access and externalized through the 10 French sheath. Our wire was exchanged for a stiff glide wire, and here you can see our 14 French gore dry seal sheath going up and over the IVC confluence. Next, we performed a venogram which showed extensive thrombosis of the left popliteal vein, femoral vein, and common femoral vein. We advanced our penumbra device over wire down to the popliteal vein and performed suction thrombectomy of this area. Here you can see suction thrombectomy being performed without a wire, which can cause some trauma to the vein. Repeat venogram does show resolution of the thrombosis, but as you can see, there is some extravasation from the vein, which does resolve. Next, we perform suction thrombectomy of the entire femoral vein and common femoral vein, and you can see the results in this venogram. We were able to pass a wire down into the profunda vein, and we performed suction thrombectomy of the profunda vein as well. Repeat venogram shows improvement in flow in the profunda vein. Following this, we perform suction thrombectomy of the common iliac vein and external iliac vein, and a repeat venogram showed improvement in the thrombosis of these veins with some residual stenosis in the common iliac vein. We then perform balloon angioplasty of this segment but there was noted to be continued compression 
suspicious for May Thurner syndrome. We advanced an IVUS into this area, which confirmed compression of the left common iliac vein by the right common iliac artery as it passes over the vessel. Here is the IVUS image where you can see the right common iliac artery passing over the left common iliac vein, causing some significant compression. Decision was made to stent the left common iliac vein. And here you can see the left common iliac vein stent coming into view while the right common iliac artery passes over the vein and is no longer compressing it. Here you can see pre and post procedure images. On the left of the screen, the left lower extremity edema is obvious. In the center of the screen, you can see the amount of thrombus that was removed during this procedure. And then on two weeks follow up in clinic, on the right of the screen, you can see her left lower extremity edema has completely resolved. A venous duplex was obtained at that time, and the left popliteal vein, as well as the left common femoral vein, remained patent.